Hello, I'm Atubo George and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Now today is a special day because today, by the grace of God, my lovely wife turns 40. Praise God. I want you to join me and bless the Lord for her life. She's been a wonderful pillar. I've got to tell you this, praise God. She is one of my secret weapons, praise God. But when you see me sharing God's word, when you see me um, doing the things I do, there are support systems that I have that enables me do these things here on earth. And, and I tell you the truth, my wife is a major, major support that I have. So today I wanted to join me to bless God for her life. Just bless his name and pray for her, that God will bless her, you know, just for my sake. Praise God. And thank you very much for yielding yourself to pray and doing that. Praise God. Praise God. Don't mind me, I'm so excited today. Hallelujah. All right, let's call for our daily bread. Are you ready? Are you ready? Praise God. Say, Father, I receive today my daily bread is coming to me now. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, today is a special day, so I'll tell you this. You will receive a special miracle today. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. So I was sharing something with you yesterday. And I told you I was going to continue today. And we were talking about lights. How do I know the true lights to walk in or the true light to follow? And I told you yesterday this is so important because until the Spirit of God begins to open your eyes to certain truths, you may never. And there are people who walk this earth and die without coming into the true light. See, John, for example, you look at John and you call him, John was a great man of God. And John, the writer of the book of John, remember, he was one of the disciples of John. So this was his boss before he met Jesus. Not just his boss, when they call you a disciple, when you're a follower of this person. And so John had his time with John the Baptist. And then he had his time with Jesus. And now he's writing these things. And he specifically said, his former master was not the light, but he was sent to be a witness of the true light. But Jesus said something, we read it yesterday in John chapter 5, that John was a burning and a shining light. Yet, he is not the light that you should follow. And I, I, I ended yesterday by telling you how, what do you follow? Or what do you see that becomes light to you? The life is what is light to me. So he said in John 1, in him was life. And the life was the light of men. So the life he lived, the life he lived, the outcome of the life he lived, was now light to men. Now listen to me. Why did he say John was not the light? Now you look at the life of John from the beginning and especially how John ended. And you look at him, a great man of God who introduced Jesus but for whatever reason, was arrested. Arrested and ended up being beheaded by the request of a little girl, influenced by her mom. 
and his head was cut off and handed over to this girl on a platter. And that's how John ended his life. That's how John died. Not just John. Now, for example, we read the stories of almost all the apostles that walked with Jesus. Many of them died some gruesome deaths. And these men served God. These men loved God. Taking a cue from John, he lived a strange kind of lifestyle. And you want to believe that that lifestyle is as a result of the, the promptings of the, his spirit. So the Bible talks about him eating locusts and honey, and wild honey. He, the, you know, wearing um, skin as clothes and, and, and just being a wilderness man. He, he, he didn't really live a normal life. So much so that Jesus used him as an example. Say, John came not eating, and you guys called him a madman. But me, I came eating and drinking, and you say, I'm a, 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 I'm a glutton. I'm a glutton. What was Jesus saying? Many of us today want to pattern our lives according to the lives of many others without pausing to ask ourselves truly, is this the light? Or is this an example of the light? The fact that somebody was light for a season doesn't mean he's light for all time. And I'll tell you this for free, and I pray the Lord will help you understand. The end of a man is what defines the life that he lived. I'll say that again. The end of a man is what defines the life that he lived. If a man was a good man, you know it at the end. And I've told you this before. The Lord told me this thing many years ago. He said, if you want to know a blessed man, wait till the third generation. <laughs> now, now that's, that's a wait you don't want to wait. But that's what God told me. He said, you want to know a blessed man? Check the third generation. It is in the third generation you will know if that man was blessed or not. Because God always confirms the blessing on a man's life. No matter the great works the man does, no matter the great work he does, no matter what sacrifice is done for the Lord, it is in the third generation, everything you see in the man's present life is not really the blessing. Most times, the reward comes first before the effect of the blessing. Now, when God blesses you, you don't see the blessing because the blessing is not all those physical things you think about. No, those are rewards. You know, you go preach somewhere and, and God blesses you with a car. It's not the blessing. It's a reward for that assignment that you, you obeyed. Every time we obey God, we receive rewards for that obedience. obedience. But then, the blessing is not just given anyhow. God checks your life before He blesses you. So there are people who you consider them blessed for a season, for example, you say, ah, this man used to be very rich, but I don't know what happened to him. See that? Now, he was not blessed. He may be a godly man, but he was not blessed. He only received the reward from whatever good that or whatever thing he was doing right. He received the reward for it. Now, I'm not talking about people who stole to become rich. I'm talking about people who honestly, by hard work and stuff, became rich. So you look at them and say, wow, that man was used, that man used to be blessed. No, there is no such thing as used to be blessed. No, 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 there is no such thing. You know why? Because the blessing of the Lord makes rich and it adds no sorrow to it. 
And God, when once God has blessed you, he cannot take it back. So there is no such thing that this man used to be blessed. Ah, God bless this man. But man, he, he used less the blessing. There is no such thing like that. Check the scriptures. When God blesses a man, the moment God blesses a man, he is tied. He is tied to that man to confirm the blessing. And guess when he confirms the blessing? In the third generation. So if God doesn't see that by the third generation, he will have to confirm the blessing, then there is no point blessing you in the first place. He will not bless you. You can end your life with reward. He can give you all the reward. As long as you're in active service, he will give you all the reward for your service to him. But the blessing, it will be in you. But your children will come and because of that blessing, their lives will be patterned in a certain way. And you have a great responsibility in that also. To teach them right and to bring them all right, upright. But it is in the third generation, God will say, now I am ready to confirm the blessing upon my servant's life, or upon this my son's life. And in that third generation, there is there is an ownership that God takes concerning the blessing. I pray you understand this. So we don't know, because of these things, we don't know how to pattern our lives. We look at people, we look at great men, we, we see their works, we say, wow, if I, can be as, if I can be half of what that man was. But then, you look at the end of his life. Sometimes we don't want to talk about the end of their lives. And sometimes we ignorantly adopt the end of their lives. For example, we, we look at the apostles and, and we, you know, you hear preachers say, how many of you can die under second, such circumstances? That they kept the word of God even when they were, their heads were being cut off. They were still confessing scriptures. Now you look at that, it, it's emotional and it, it looks like, Wow, wow. But I tell you the truth. They, at that point, were not bearing witness of the light. They were not. If they were not even bearing witness of the light at the point of their death, then it tells you that they, at that stage, were not the light. You see, Jesus, who was the true light, even though he had to pass through all the things he passed through, which were things that were written concerning him, he ended up, his end showed that he was that light. And I tell you this, child of God, anything short of that light Anything that doesn't resemble that light is not the true light. It is not bearing witness of that light. This message is going to be a hard one. But you see, we've left that stage of pampering ourselves and, and trying to make believe what we feel is okay for us. It is time to strive to the real truth. It is time to begin to enter that which God has ordained from the foundation of the earth. And it will not come down to settle on you. It is you that will rise up because we rise up in faith. Faith doesn't just come to keep or meet us where we are. Faith commands that we rise and walk in it. So I said anything that is shut off the life of Jesus from the beginning to the end, especially the end, is short of being the light and is short of bearing witness of the light. So what are you trying to say? Are you trying to say all the apostles of Jesus, Peter, great apostle Paul, and, 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 and all of them, their end didn't show that they kept the light till the end. They didn't bear witness. To the end. But you find Christians, they will say, oh, me, I will love to, the day I die, I will love to die 
like, like one of those apostles. And then they want to risk their lives and go into regions where they will be easily killed. And they want to just carry that testimony. That is not the testimony of Jesus. The testimony of Jesus bears life in it. And you can't die and claim you kept the testimony of Jesus. Hear me? And this is what I'm going to end with today. Jesus said, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it abundantly. And a man dies and you say he kept the testimony of Jesus. He didn't keep the testimony of Jesus. No, he didn't. I pray that the Spirit of God will bring. You know what we're talking about is that he will flood your, the eyes of your heart with light. And that's what this is all about. And I pray that that light will penetrate your being and open your eyes to begin to see in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.